All right, you lot, let's talk Villa and the first of a wave of new signings coming into the club. Uh, of course, Ian Matson has been confirmed. He He's part of the old guard for me, but today Fabrizio Romano went on an absolute mad one and just confirmed Samuel Illing Jr., who we are going to be talking about today, Enzo Berenchia and Ross Barkley. One, I don't know if you may have forgotten that, that was happening, but that is still very much on the cards and been con firm so today of course we're going to be talking about samuel illing jr we're going to break down his stats for juventus last season we're going to break down how he fits in to the aston villa team where his strengths might be exploited for us and of course what i think of the deal and the value of him coming into villa obviously part of that douglas louise massive 50 million euro swap deal with juventus but further without further ado adieu Adieu, adieu. Someone called me out for it. I'm still going to say it differently. I'm going to say it differently every single time. Sorry, mate, but still at the villa. Let's talk Illing Jr. and his stats. A quick fact file on Samuel Illing Jr. 182 centimetres tall, so just over six foot. He is only 20 years of age, currently playing for Juventus, but very, very soon to be Aston Villa, as we all know. He is English and has a current market value of around 15 million. Um, him and Balanchea combined had a market value of 22 million as part of that Douglas Louise swap deal. They have him down here, mainly playing as a left midfielder. He is by trade a left back. The reason they have him as a left midfielder is because Juventus played a flat 3-5-2 last season, so he was operating as a defensive midfielder in a sense in their system. For Juventus last year, he managed only four starts out of 24 games, an average rating of 6.64, uh, getting two goals and an assist in 800 minutes of playing time for them as you can see he got two goals overall in his Juventus career which is 45 games um, but did get three and nine for Juventus next gen he came from the Chelsea Academy as well started to flourish a bit later on in the season there as you can see but let's have a look at his stats like I say only one goal um, we are going to look at his per 90s as well um, but I want, want to point out a couple of things of his stats and we're going to go into the tactics of how he might fit into the team a little bit later on but did get those two assists his pass accuracy leaves something to be desired um you know 79 percent it's not the best but at the same time it's not terrible um you know long ball accuracy fine but he did he created 19 chances which isn't bad from the limited amount of playing time that he did have and coming off of the bench later in the games when juventus might be seeing those games out but 19 successful crosses puts him in the top well 20th but nearly top 15th percentile for juventus last season and a cross accuracy of 40 1.3% now. I've said it a thousand times on this channel. The elite wingers in world football, the elite fullbacks in world football float between a 30 to 35% cross percent ratio. He is hitting 41.3 and he completed nearly the most for the club last season. It's not like he's just completed two and then said, you know what, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go and drink a Fantalet Rev on the bench. He is banging the crosses out and banging them out successfully. Um, so that's something definitely we're going to look at. And defensively, wins a lot of his aerial duels. He was only dribbled past seven times, which is one of the least for Juventus last year. He won possession back five times. He had 40 recoveries, six interceptions, 13 tackles on about a 50% success ratio there. Only getting a yellow card. If we go into his per 90s, you can see that his actual goals per 90 isn't that bad. It puts him in the top 25th percentile for Juventus last season. The same with his XG on target. Assist wise, puts him in the top 10th percentile for Juventus last season. Same with his expected assists. He created about two chances per game, which actually put him in the top 7th percentile. Same with crosses. Again, that is really, really impressive. His cross. Uh, and it is one of his strengths. I looked at his strengths and weaknesses. I've done a bit of reading up about him. I've read some scouting reports. The main things they always pick out. One, the geezer's rapid. Two, he has a very, very deadly cross on him. I like that combination. I like it. Uh, 66 touches and nearly three in the opposition box. Winning about 1.5 tackles a game, which actually puts him pretty high for Juventus last season. Again, 75% of his aerial duels. And wins back possession in the final third a decent amount of times as well. So the main things to point out for him is going to be that cross accuracy mixed with lethal pace, which is pretty much all you need sometimes in the Premier League. You look at Serie A last season. I don't think he played that many games last year. Got a goal, got an assist. Again, though, 
offensively his per 90 output was very very good um, and again you look at the cross accuracy not so good last season but he must have improved on that but again successful dribbles last year put him in the top ninth percentile per 90 the touches in the opposition box so there's a lot of potential there to be worked with and he is only 20 years of age where will Illing Jr fit into the team now you'll notice I haven't actually got him in the team because I don't think he is going to be starting for us next season I've just popped a little starting to uh, line up together um, but want to show you how he offers us a different option to Matson, who of course we have signed as well now in the Matson video and again I've done my research on him I've already done the video I'll pop it somewhere on the screen for you guys to click on and go and watch if you wish to um, you'll notice that I said specifically that Matson is a different style of left back to Illing Jr in the sense of out of possession yes we'll play our tight and compact 4-4-2 but in possession I think something like this might happen. Matson is very very comfortable floating in to being a double pivot. Pau Torres left footed naturally will float out to the left. Konza being a more defensive fullback will tuck in. It allows McGinn to operate uh, in that 10 roll. Rogers and Bailey to push up and then Watkins and whoever his strike partner is to get ready to run in behind the lines and I think in transition that is what you're going to see happening Matson will drop in play that double pivot with Kamara whereas Kamara will look to spray the ball back left and right Matson will be looking to pick the ball up and progress it forward or ping a ball out again right or if we click it all the way around if you can hear my click sorry left um, and then in possession, once we've done the transition, when we've got forward, he will then join Rogers on the overlap. Watkins and Duran will tuck in. Blah de blah de blah. Bailey will hug the line. McGinn will float around, and Kamara can stick to the defending job with Carlos and Pal. Brilliant. That's Matson. What does Illing Junior differ? I wonder. Now let's just get Matson out of there and replace him with Illing Junior. And obviously, the option is much different because Inning Jr. is a player that uses his pace to hug the line, beat players with his impressive dribbling, and then put pinpoint crosses into the box. Now, obviously, Bailey will look to tuck in. Maybe Rogers will tuck in and play that central 10 role that we've seen with Duran. Um, but if we just reset this back here, or say we're, let's say attacking wise, you know, we know how a left back works defensively. Our players will all push up. Kamara sits in that pivot role. I could see. Illing Jr. and Rogers having a bit of a nasty little like overlap, underlap type deal going on that left wing, getting Illing Jr. into this position effectively, the Dina position uh, as it were, and then we can flood the box with Watkins, Duran, Bailey at the back post and McGinn sitting on the edge of the box and Illing Jr. works as effectively a crossing output. You bring the ball into Rogers, he holds up the ball very, very well, he pings it to Illing Jr. and then he can literally just spray balls towards the edge of the box into the uh, six yard box for Watkins and Duran to attack maybe he can put a deep one into Bailey hanging around he clearly has those types of crosses in his repertoire and can just pick them out at will and I think that's how he fits into the team especially with his pace later on into the game Matson maybe brought off 70 minute or 70th minute or so then Illing Jr can just come absolutely rinse the opposition team's right back on this sort of area there and then pump balls into the box hey Conta can even join in and maybe get two goals instead of one next season what do I think of the deal in general I've already covered it. Go and watch this video that I put up about the deal in the Douglas Louise video. It comes from all from this tweet where Fabrizio Romano has broken down the finances of this deal. In terms of the deal, in total, I give it a 5 out of 10. Illing Jr. as a player, technically, we paid nothing for him and they've essentially paid us to have him. I'd give that an 8 out of 10. That he's 20 years of age. There's a lot of positivity around him and his attacking prowess on the interwebs if you go and find it like I have. Defensively, I think he probably needs to work on that side of his game, but Emery can mould a player into a defensive genius like that, like Putty, like Play-Doh, or like a sandcastle when it's nice and like wet and it just sticks nicely and you can create like... Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. I think Inning Jr. as a player, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 coming to Villa. I'm very, very excited to see what he can bring. I can see him being a backup left-back option to Matson. And this might allow us to sell Dina and Moreno and just completely revolutionise, sorry if you heard me hit the mic there, the left-hand side 
of the pitch and again for FFP selling Dino and Moreno getting them off the wage bill is going to be good overall but what do you guys think obviously I want to hear your guys comments down below Juventus fans Villa fans Premier League fans what do you think of Illing Jr. I reply to all the comments eventually when I do get time obviously having two cats a fiance and a baby sometimes takes up your time and you know you sprinkle in a full-time job into there but I will get back to all your comments so let me know down below like the video subscribe for more as always up the villa samuel willing jr i'm very very excited to see you bombing down the left wing for villa soon and whipping in those trademark crosses for Watkins to get on the end on and get 30 goals next season what